Welcome back to SS Productions. I'm Shreya. And I'm Sham. Today we're going to take you along our wonderful eight day cruise aboard the Symphony of the Seas. We were super excited to board the ship, which is currently the third largest cruise ship in the world. Our room was ready, so we decided to check it out, and here's a little room tour. We stayed in a junior suite with a bump out balcony. Overall, the room was very spacious as far as cruise ship rooms go, and it was perfect for all of our needs. Today, we had lunch at the Windjammer Buffet, and a lot of people discourage against eating at the buffet on embarkation day because it can get very crowded, but it was late enough that this wasn't really an issue for us. Unfortunately, our entire embarkation day was super rainy and windy, so we didn't get to enjoy the outdoor areas. Instead, we explored a bunch of cool indoor things on the ship. The decorations and art aboard are so cool. This piece right here is in the middle of two elevator shafts. We walked through the promenade, which is essentially the heart of the ship. With a bunch of stores and restaurants, it's literally like a mall. There's even a Starbucks. Of course, there are a bunch of holiday decorations, including a huge Christmas tree and a gingerbread display. A bunch of fun activities happen in the promenade. There's a Latin club called Boleros and a karaoke bar, On Air. At On Air, there are these cool boards that display facts about the ship and random trivia. Right below the promenade is the entertainment place, where you'll find show venues, including the Royal Theatre. This is where the production and headliner shows take place. Make sure you make reservations beforehand as these shows fill up quick. The boardwalk is another major neighborhood on the ship, and it is exactly the picture of a seaside carnival, complete with a carousel, arcade, and several restaurants. We played a little bit of mini golf because the rain let up a little, but when it came time for the sail away, it began to rain again, and the wind was pretty extreme as well. So there was no big sail away party like there usually is and we just watched the sail away from Fort Lauderdale from our balcony. Tonight's dinner was at the Solarium Bistro, which is a Mediterranean themed restaurant. We had a delicious assortment of salads as well as pita with a bunch of types of hummus and everything was really tasty. And of course, the best part was dessert. I had baklava, which was flaky with nuts and not overly sweet. We enjoyed the night at Central Park, which is a literal garden aboard the ship. The lights were so magical and it was very pretty. Another cool place on the ship is the Bionic Bar, where two robot arms make drinks and it was really interesting to watch. Then we watched a show called Hero in the Aqua Theater. The performers were incredibly talented. Later, we enjoyed singing Christmas carols and watching the tree light up in the promenade. Two, one, two, three. Day two was our first sea day and we woke up pretty early and the ship felt very empty. It was still raining today morning, in fact the entire day's weather was pretty gloomy. But we started off the day with breakfast at Johnny Rockets, which is like a diner. Right after breakfast, the boardwalk is bustling with activity. The carousel was operating and it was a great vibe. The Aqua Theater, which is where we saw yesterday's show, is located at the very end of the boardwalk. Of 
course, we had to ride the carousel. And a little PSA, this horse right here, her name is Taylor. There are two arcades on the ship, one in Boardwalk and another much larger one near the teen club. We ate lunch in the main dining room, and then headed back to our room where we were greeted with this adorable towel animal. As you can tell, the weather wasn't great, which was annoying. In the afternoon, we had a great time ice skating at Studio B, the ship's ice rink. Both of us don't have a lot of experience ice skating, but I like to think that we improved a lot. Tonight was formal night, which meant that everyone was dressed to the nines, but it also meant that places like the promenade were super crowded, with lots of people wanting to take pictures, both professional and personal. Dinner tonight was at Coastal Kitchen. Day three was another sea day, and we started out our morning with breakfast at the Solarium Bistro. Today, however, there was a major change, the weather. We were so excited to see the sun finally shining so that we could enjoy the warm and sunny weather Caribbean cruises are supposed to have. We rode the Ultimate Abyss, which is a slide that plummets 10 stories. And since the Abyss is located at the aft of the ship, there is also a beautiful view of the wake right here. Next, we got all suited up for the zip line. Huge tip, if the line for activities like the Ultimate Abyss and zip line are too long, don't waste your time waiting, just come back later. There were plenty of times where there was no line at all for these activities. And there I go across the ship. We spent some time in the pools, hot tubs, and riding the water slide. And then we had to try out the flow rider, where you can boogie board or even surf. Honestly, with the water pushing against you, it was really hard to stay on the board. But Sham actually did a pretty good job. Here's another walkthrough of the promenade on deck 5, which is also home to the walking slash running track. The most fun detail here are these signs of encouragement hanging from above. We played some table tennis with the coolest view, and the reason we're not playing very well is because the ball was cracked. Since it was nice and sunny, we got to soak in the lovely Central Park. And a little fun fact, Central Park is home to over 20,000 plants. Isn't that mind blowing? We saw a beautiful sunset at sea. And then watched Hairspray the Musical in the Royal Theatre. And it was fantastic. The vibrant costumes, sets, and of course phenomenal singing and dancing was a treat to watch. Once again, we ate dinner at Coastal Kitchen. And tonight was white night, so everyone was dressed in white and there were a couple of fun parties. We went to a silent disco and it was our first time ever. It was so much more fun than we were expecting. Try to guess what song we're listening to. Day four was our first port day, Aruba. We've been to Aruba before, and last time we checked out some of the most popular landmarks. So this time we wanted to do something a little bit different. 
We started off the day with a tour of an aloe factory at Aruba Aloe. Aloe used to be Aruba's primary economy and this island used to be the largest exporter of aloe. We saw a demonstration of how to use different parts of aloe vera and then we took a tour of the manufacturing plant. Finally, we bought some goodies to try out from the shop. On the way to our next attraction, we saw some cool cacti and vegetation and it was overall a really nice drive. Next up, we walked around some streets that are littered with street art. Everything was so colorful and there were some truly huge murals. My personal favorite has to be this Greetings from Aruba postcard-esque one. On the way to our next attraction, we stopped by this field to say hi to some donkeys. Soon after, we went to our first beach of the trip, Baby Beach. It was pretty hot, so we had to rent a cabana for shade, but the turquoise waters were gorgeous and the sand was so soft and powdery underneath our feet. The water is really calm here, there are no major waves or rapids, and it's also pretty shallow, so you can go pretty far away from the shore and still only have water up to your waist. We only spent a couple hours here, but it was a super relaxing addition to our day. We hopped aboard a catamaran for a sunset sail. We booked this excursion through Royal Caribbean and my only complaint was that the boat felt really crowded. So if you want a more peaceful experience, it's probably a good idea to look into local vendors. Still, we enjoyed seeing the Aruban architecture and our ship, which was ginormous as expected. Unlimited drinks were included with our excursion, which was a major plus. And we enjoyed the uninterrupted panoramic views from the front of the boat. But of course, the best part was watching the sun sink into the sea. Look at that orange ball of fire. Our ship stayed in Aruba until 10.30 p.m. and we checked out some shops after our sunset sail. Day 5 brought us to Curacao and we had a fantastic view of the port from our balcony. We took the first part of our day on foot where we saw the numerous souvenir shops in the port area. And vibrant resorts that just scream tropical vacation. First side of the day was the Rift Port which is a fort established in the 1800s that has now been converted to a waterfront mall. Pretty cool, right? Curacao is part of the Dutch Caribbean and that Dutch aspect is clearly reflected in some of the architecture. It's Amsterdam meets bright colors. Past even more souvenir shops was the Queen Emma Pontoon Bridge. And that other bridge you see in the distance is the Queen Juliana Bridge. We spent the majority of our day at the Avila Beach Resort, where we bought a resort day pass to enjoy the beach and pool amenities. The property was so beautiful. And of course, the beach was wonderful as well. Huts along the beach were included and provided some shade and the white sand beaches were lovely to walk along. Additionally, these beaches are protected from rough waters due to rock barriers which made the experience even nicer. A major benefit of choosing a private beach at a resort is that it doesn't get too crowded, making it a super relaxing way to spend your day. One activity we really enjoyed here was paddleboarding. It was our first time doing it and it was so much fun. The resort also offered complimentary snorkel gear and the water was so clear and full of reefs and fish. 
There was a little pier, which was the perfect photo spot, and we could even see our ship all the way from the resort. Overall, we had a wonderful time at the Avila Beach Hotel and would totally recommend it. We drove back to the port and marveled at the beautiful landscapes and buildings here in Willemstad. Back on the ship, we had to try out the Bionic Bar for ourselves, and we got a robot-made, non-alcoholic, delicious drink. Tonight, we saw a show on ice. It was called 1977, and it was truly an experience like no other. We watched these immensely talented figure skaters perform Olympic-worthy tricks. Days six and seven were both sea days. We had a fantastic brunch in the main dining room. My pancakes were so chocolatey. And then we headed to rock climbing. The amount of included activities on this ship is insane. From zip lining to boogie boarding to rock climbing, the Symphony of the Seas truly has it all. Rock climbing is on the boardwalk, and we also caught a glimpse of the Johnny Rocket staff doing a fun little dance for guests. There was a cool climbing wall also on the boardwalk. And then we spent some time in the arcade playing a bunch of fun games. Our favorite was this air hockey table with like a million pucks that you had to hit at once. We checked out Wonderland, which is a specialty dining restaurant with whimsical dishes and a lovely venue. And then we found this really neat space behind the rock climbing wall, where there are a bunch of loungers and literally no other people. It's the perfect spot for relaxation, but shh, keep it our little secret. There are phenomenal views of the wake here as well. We saw another show in the Royal Theatre called Flight Dare to Dream, and there were some truly incredible moments. The one that takes the cake though was when an actual plane prop flew right over our heads. It was so cool. For the best experience, we recommend sitting in the 6th through 10th rows for the show. Day 7 was actually supposed to be in Labadee, Haiti, but it became a sea day due to bad weather. So instead, we went to Nassau in the Bahamas on day 8. We had yet another relaxing beach day today at Junkanoo Beach. Now, there is a public part of the beach and a private resort part owned by Margaritaville. We bought a beach resort pass to enjoy the private part of the beach, and the major difference is that our side of the beach was significantly less crowded, especially as the day went on and more and more people arrived. We could see the ships from the beach, and there were four or five other cruise ships, so it's obvious that there were a lot of tourists in Nassau today. And I will stand by the statement that nothing beats the turquoisey blue waters and soft sand in the Bahamas. Overall, we had a great beach day, and even though we couldn't go to Labadee, I'm so glad we got to make it up with a stop in the Bahamas. Nassau has a pretty well-known straw market with local vendors selling everything from woodwork to Nassau apparel and jewelry. And it can seem intimidating to bargain here, but just know that it is completely common practice. Here's a wonderful final Caribbean sunset, and you can see the other ships docked here. There was even a yacht. Tonight we watched another ice skating show called Ice Skate 2.0. And the whole performance was obviously stunning and a whole lot of fun to watch. Our final dinner was at Coastal Kitchen and I just want to give a huge shout out to our amazing waiter and maitre d' at this restaurant. Before we knew it, our cruise had come to an end. We had an amazing time aboard the Symphony of the Seas and we can't wait for our future cruise adventures. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, this is SS Productions. <laughs>